Hello, everyone. Good morning. Hi, teacher. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Hope everything's going well with you. Hoping your classes are going well. Today. Thank you, teacher. Same for you. Oh, thank you. And I want to jump right into today's session here. Again, I want to try to give you as much time as possible to answer questions, to discuss with you your, your progress in the tests that we're working on. Just as a reminder, yesterday we uh, talked about kind of what we're going to be doing over the next uh, unit, over the next basically five weeks, this week and four more weeks after uh, after this week. And you were asked to start to begin thinking about a topic that you want to write about. We're going to be completing for Unit 2 an academic essay, a 7 to 800 word, five paragraph academic essay according to APA. So the possible topics that I would ask that you consider are environment, social issues, and health, something related to health. Okay, these are going to be our topics for the next uh, few weeks as, as it appears here in Trello. So this week we're working on environment. Next week we'll look at social issues. And the week after we'll focus on health. But you can choose one of these topics to write an essay about. All right, just choose one of these for, for your essay. Today we're going to expand what we started yesterday. Yesterday, we were focusing on paraphrasing ideas and really thinking and reflecting on, you know, what it means to speak about a text, right? Or speak about an idea, I should say, and what it means to actually think about writing about those same ideas and looking at how we can paraphrase an idea using synonyms, maybe rewording or reorganizing the text thinking about how we can org organize our ideas in, in a written text and how that might differ from how we expressed our, the same idea uh, verbally. Today we want to expand that idea and we want to now start to think about an academic body paragraph. This is going to be a, a paragraph that talks about one key idea. So remember, a body paragraph, that's why we have paragraphs, so that we can develop a middle, a beginning, a middle, and an end to one idea. That's really what a body paragraph sets out to do, right? So today we're going to look at the paraphrased text that we created yesterday. And... Today, I want us to take that same idea, that same paragraph, and develop it even more, trying to create now an academic text, again, based on the same ideas, the same information that you shared verbally on Monday, yesterday, in your paraphrased paragraph, and today now in an academic text paragraph, basically an academic version of what you were thinking about and talking about and writing about yesterday. So the difference now between this type of paragraph, you will need to find, you need to go online, find a source, at least one source to support an idea that you mentioned or an idea that you wrote about in your paraphrased paragraph, or you could also add information. Remember yesterday, I asked not to add additional information from your paraphrased paragraph. I asked you to stick primarily with the information, the ideas that you expressed on Monday. But today, when we're developing our paragraph, our academic paragraph, you, you can add some information, and I'm thinking specifically like a detail or an example, right, to support 
your your idea. You might find something that you can add to your paragraph for for this uh, for this exercise. All right, so you do have that option. In fact, you probably will need to add something here. Right? You'll probably, you know, maybe it's a fact, maybe it's a statistic, maybe it's a specific example of what it is that you were talking about. I still would like for you to stick to, as best you can, the idea that you were writing about yesterday and speaking about on Monday. But now bring in at least one outside source. Now, I don't want to get, um, today, I, I don't want to get too much in the weeds here about the details of a, of a body paragraph, but I, I, I do want to spend a few minutes giving you some ideas. Now, those of you who have taken prope, a lot of this will sound repetitive, I hope. I hope. Um, but not, if not, that's, all, that's okay. Um, and maybe the way that I'm expressing it is slightly different than what maybe you're familiar with, okay? So this is not the only way to think about developing a body paragraph, but this is one I have used for a while in, in working with learners, and it's what I think about when I write my own body paragraph. Today's discussion, we're only talking about body paragraphs. This is one type of paragraph in a five-paragraph essay that you'll need to consider. And today, we're just talking about body paragraphs. This is going to be ideas that you develop kind of in the middle of the essay. It's not the introduction, and it's not the conclusion. We'll talk about those another day. Today, we're talking about one body paragraph that would be a part of a five paragraph essay or even a, a larger essay or longer essay, right? If whatever the case may be. All right. So think of the acronym MEAL, M E A L. This is an acronym that we often use to think about how each sentence functions within a body paragraph. Again, we're talking about an academic body paragraph. This is not a paragraph that you typically see in the newspaper, in a blog post, many blog posts actually, um, you know, magazine ad. You're probably not going to see paragraphs even in a novel, in, in a creative writing. Okay, those are different types of genres, different types of writing. Today we're focusing on academic writing. Okay, so if any time someone in another class, ask you to write an essay according to APA, then assume that this is an academic exercise, that this is going to be where you're going to need body paragraphs that need to adhere to what we're talking about here today, that need to follow some of these guidelines that we discussed today and basically the rest of this unit and the rest of the semester and later on when you get into redacción, when you're right, focusing on writing academic text, this is what we're going to need to be thinking about. So the meal plan. All right, now the meal plan, right, the acronym MEAL, M-E-A-L. M stands for what? Those of you who have heard of this before, what does the M stand for? Main. The main what? Statement or idea? Uh huh. The main statement, the main idea. Sometimes we call this the topic sentence. And where might you find, usually, where will you find the main idea or the topic sentence of a paragraph? At the beginning. At the beginning. So I suggest to present each body paragraph, begin each paragraph with a topic sentence, with the main idea. All right, so the topic sentence, the main statement, the main idea, it's one sentence, and that's also important. It's one sentence that expresses the main idea of 
the paragraph. Now remember, we're at the paragraph level here. We're not talking about an essay here. We're talking about simply one paragraph that begins with a topic sentence. And guess what? The hardest sentence to, to develop in a body paragraph is the main idea. Sometimes the main idea is super clear to you as the writer before you even write the paragraph. Sometimes you think it's the ideal par uh, idea topic sentence and you get into the weeds, you're developing the body paragraph only to find out later that that topic sentence, you were off base. You were, it's, it's, not, it's no longer the topic sentence you thought it was. It's, it's off topic. It's not on topic. It's off topic. And we have to go back and modify it. So however you end up developing the topic sentence, the very first sentence of your body paragraph, right, is fine, right? And all of us are going to go through different processes as we write and develop our body paragraphs. But at the end of the day, when we complete our body paragraph, that first sentence is key. That first sentence is a signpost. It's like you're driving down a highway. You like to see every so often a signpost to say, okay, am I, am I going in the right direction? That's what a topic, a good topic sentence will do. It'll say, okay, this is what's coming up. Prepare yourself. This is what a topic sentence needs to do. Now, after you've established the main idea of the paragraph, of the body paragraph, we're probably going to have what kind of sentence? What do you think will be the second sentence of every body paragraph that you're going to write? Any ideas? How will the second sentence function in, within the context of the body paragraph? Any ideas? I remember the supporting idea. It is a supporting idea. Yes, it is a supporting idea. Anybody else? What kind of supporting idea do you think? How will it function? What do you think the E in the acronym MEAL stands for? Evidence. Evidence. So yes, they are supporting ideas, but now we're going to start using language that's a little bit more specific to how each sentence actually functions. So E stands for evidence. You can think of evidence as examples, details, facts, statistics. These are all examples of good evidence. When you're writing your paragraph and you're, you're thinking you've developed a good topic sentence, ask yourself, for example, right? Read the first sentence, the topic sentence, and then ask yourself, for example. Now, whatever you want to write out afterwards, that is going to be your evidence. That's the examples the details, the facts, the statistics. Now, where can you find that information? This is where I'm going to ask you to search online. I'm saying search online because we're all online now. Of course, if you want to go to a library and you can access a library, of course, pick up a book. That is your evidence. So think of your evidence as, number one, being specific. It does support the topic, uh, topic sentence. Their facts and statistics, but number two, they should come, and this is important, they should come from an outside source. They should come from an outside source. So evidence sentences need to include a citation. Remember that we're going to be using citations to bring in ideas from an outside source in the form of an evidence sentence. Okay, this is not going to be anecdotal. This is not going to be based on your experience. This is going to be evidence, examples, details, facts, statistics that are coming from an outside source. It's information that's not common knowledge. So you need something that's specific, number one, for your evidence. 
And number two, it needs to come from an article, a book, possibly a website. We'll talk about that later, but you know, the best sources are always going to be peer review journal articles. Okay. Peer review journal articles, evidence sentences. The second sentence, if you're taking notes here, a little tip, the first sentence will always be what kind of sentence? After the topic sentence? No, the very first sentence of each oh, body no. paragraph will always be what kind of sentence? A declarative sentence? Uh, well, it will be a declarative sentence. Um, we're not going to use imperatives. That's... Uh, Certainly, we're not going to, and we're not going to use questions. So, yes, it is going to be a declarative sentence. Uh, what else? What else will every first sentence be? Um, the topic sentence. The topic sentence. The second sentence of each body paragraph will always be what kind of sentence? The second sentence. What do you think? Um, the first supporting idea. Uh huh. And how will that first supporting idea function? What what kind of sentence will that be? If we're looking at the acronym Neil. Uh, be the E letter E. And what's the E stand for? Um, the evidence. The evidence. The evidence. Now, this is a small but very important detail. The first sentence will always be the main idea. The second sentence will always be the evidence. We want to present the evidence right away. We don't want to wait until the very end of the paragraph. Give us the facts first or show us the facts. Now, we have a third type of sentence that's called the analysis. What the, the analysis does, this is another type of sentence. Remember that we're identifying sentence types in a body paragraph. The main idea is a type of sentence. Evidence is a type of sentence. And the analysis is a type of sentence. The analysis sentence does what? It connects the evidence to the main idea. It makes a connection. It says, okay, how is it related? That's your job as the writer to make that connection. Don't assume that just because you provide evidence, end of story, next, right? And a lot of writers make this mistake. They have so much evidence, but there's little discussion. There's little commenting. There's little analysis. Make that connection. Compare and contrast, right? Explain. Explain why. This is where you are showing your critical thinking skills in the analysis part. Everything really leads up to the analysis. Now, in order to analyze something, what do we need first? Evidence. We need the evidence first. Give us the details. Then make the connection. Then begin analyzing. The last type of sentence is called the linking sentence or the summarizing sentence. So the very last sentence of your body paragraph, you really have two options here. The first option is to link the, the main idea of the current paragraph to the main idea of the next paragraph. Think of it like a transition. Or you can write the last sentence as a type of summary. You can summarize the paragraph. All right. So you have different choices and it really depends on, you know, uh, it depends on a lot of things. It depends on where the body paragraph is within the, the essay. It just depends. Some of it's just a personal choice. Do you need that summarizing sentence or do you think you have enough that you can just link one body paragraph to the next. So here we have types of sentences. And I, I, when you're developing your body paragraph, this first body paragraph for this class, think of how are, how are your sentences functioning, number one. And number two, what's the placement? What's the organization? Because we know that the main idea is always going to begin the body paragraph. We know the evidence sentence. We're going to present the evidence before the analysis. We're going to present the evidence before the analysis. Don't analyze something that you haven't first 
shown the evidence to. We want to know the details. The analysis should only discuss things, information, evidence that you've already presented, not what you're going to present. And then finally, the very last sentence will either link an idea or it will summarize ideas. Now, one thing is to talk about this and another is to do it. All right. So um, I, I want to just show you here some possible examples of how you can develop a paragraph. Now, as a general rule, I suggest that you try to write each body paragraph somewhere between five to eight sentences. Okay, this is not, this is just a tip, a general rule uh, that you might want to think about. Typically, five to eight sentences. In these examples that I'm showing you here on my screen, we have examples of one, two, three, four, five, six sentence paragraphs. And I have some examples of organization, like ways that you can organize these types of sentences. Some that are acceptable. Some I think um, should be rearranged that I wouldn't write out. Okay, so for example, in this first example, we have a six sentence paragraph. The first idea is a meal plan two sentences as evidence, all right? So we've talked about evidence, but, you know, as an evidence sentence can be one sentence. It could be two sentences. could be three sentences. Depends on, just depends on what you're trying to say. But in this example, we have two sentences that are functioning as evidence sentences. So these are going to be citations. Then we have two sentences that are functioning as an analysis, or it's a comment, or it's explaining, or it's comparing and contrasting. And then the last sentence is the linking sentence. So this is, this is fine. Notice this example. Let's jump down to the third. Main idea, evidence, evidence, analyze, 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 link. Notice here we have three analyzed analysis sentences and two evidence sentences. That's okay. All right? This doesn't mean that if you have two evidence sentences, you always need to have two analysis sentences. No, it doesn't. Look at this example. M-E-A-E-A-L, main idea, evidence, analysis, evidence, analysis, link. That's okay. You got, you're basically showing a little bit of evidence, and then you talk about it. A little bit of evidence, then you comment, and then you conclude the paragraph. That's fine. Notice, compare this example with the first example. The first example, you're putting all the evidence together, and then you analyze everything. Now, you might say, oh, you know what, I like this first the best. I'm going to write all my body paragraphs like this. All evidence first and then all analysis. I wouldn't look at it like that. All right? It's not that any one of these is better. The ones that I've indicated as being okay. All right? This doesn't mean that any one of these that are okay are better than the other. What's best is how you're expressing yourself, how you are explaining or laying out your information. There might be some ideas that are fairly complex and you really need to provide all of the evidence first before you can really talk about it. So in that case, yeah, this first option is probably the best. But you might have a situation where maybe it's, um, you really need to break it down piece by piece and actually explain yourself as you present each piece of evidence. So maybe this is, in some cases, maybe this will be the better way to do it. So when you're developing an essay, you can easily choose different ways to present your ideas. You're not limited to, uh, to just one way of writing these or presenting these types of sentences. But there are some examples here that I've indicated that I would say I would try to avoid because then they could become incoherent or incomplete. Remember, the whole purpose of the meal plan is to provide a de fully developed body paragraph. So here we don't have the main idea first. Here we're actually analyzing too much. We actually don't have enough evidence. We're analyzing too much. We have here, 
the opposite, where we have way too much evidence with a very little analysis. And this is a very common, I would say, is it a mistake? Okay, maybe. Uh, this is a very common phenomena that I spend a lot of time talking with students about, is trying to find the balance between evidence and analysis. We don't, too, we don't want too much evidence and not enough analysis, nor do we want too much analysis with very little evidence. We want to balance between those two. We always start with the main idea. We always conclude with a linking sentence or a summarizing sentence. So today, my friends, I would like to give you an opportunity to take the ideas that you've been talking about on Monday, that you've been thinking about yesterday in your paraphrased um, paragraph. And I want you now to put on your academic writing hat, look at those same ideas, and see if you can expand a little bit. Now, I think now we can expand if we're going to find something online, some pieces of information that you can add to your discussion, that you can provide support. Right? This is different than just talking off the top of your head. This is now actually looking for someone else's opinion, preferably expert opinion, on whatever it is that you want to say, looking for support so that your ideas have more validity. Instead of you just saying, well, I think this, I think that. No, but I can support my ideas because I have evidence that's coming from some other source. As long as we're selective and careful with the types of evidence, right, that's what we're using. I mean, if you just find a comment off of some pace, uh, Facebook post or Instagram post, well, that's probably not quite as good as finding a peer-reviewed journal article or finding a, a reputable book. So if you're not familiar, hopefully, uh, maybe if you're new to the university, um, this will be an opportunity where you can use the library, the digital library at our fine institution. And I'm going to share the link here. If you have never used this space, those of you who have taken Prope, pretty sure you've used it. Um, if, but if you're new to the university, let me share the link here to the digital library. And... We have a lot of databases in this library that are suitable for our topics uh, for, for the classes that you're going to take in the BA. I always like to start with this search. Let's say that I'm looking for grammar, let's see, covert grammar. You put in your search term. If you're familiar with the Bling search method here, you could say, you know, if I'm going to look for the phrase covert grammar and not overt grammar. Okay, so if you're familiar with the operators, the Boolean search, you can use those as well. When you go in to the digital library for the first time, always make sure you sign in right away. The first time, you'll just have to go in and Sign in. If you're online now, you go ahead and see if you can sign in to the university library. And it will give you some options. Now, I don't want to spend uh, a lot of time today, right now, at this moment, so giving you some suggestions, but there's a lot of different ways that you can filter your search here and save your searches and et cetera. But I, I think I would start here. There are other sources. Okay, that we can talk about later. But I want to give you some time today, guys, to start developing your body paragraph now, expanding the idea that we've been that you've been thinking about and talking about this week. And I'd like for you to continue to work in your teams from this week, week four. I'd like for you to add your paragraph, your academic paragraph with at least one citation just below your reflection and your paraphrased paragraph that you started yesterday in the same document, in the same shared Word document. And I would also include just below your paragraph the reference 
to the citation. So you're going to have a citation and a reference. Try to include at least one citation. If you want to go crazy and have two, go for it. Two or three, probably no more than three, right? If you're feeling on the wild side, go for it. Uh, but at least one citation, please, in your uh, academic paragraph. And this is just to see how we can convert basically an informal text, a paraphrased idea, into now maybe a more formal piece of writing. All right, guys. I know I uh, went on a little uh, today here, but there's a lot of details, and we're not finished talking about the meal plan. Okay? I spend a long time. All semester we'll be talking about the meal plan anytime we're writing an academic text. And uh, you'll be hearing about some form of the meal plan, like maybe some teachers talk about P, P-E-E. -E. That's point, the main point, evidence, and explain, explanation, right? It's basically the same, okay? They leave off the last sentence. I call it the meal uh, the topic sentence or the main idea. They, talk, they call it the main point. But it's basically the same idea. The last thing I'll ask you to do once you've completed the paragraph is to just uh, write out the, the link. There's a, a folder here. Uh, list your name and your team. And if you have one link for all of your teams, because that's what I'm, I'm asking, one shared document. Uh, if anyone is using ind individual Word files, then just include your link next to your name. But uh, if you have one shared file per team, then just include a hypertext next to the team. Okay, remember to, uh, the way that you can include a hyperlink is going to insert link and then copy and paste that link to the Word document that you've been working in. All right, guys, uh, I'm going to go ahead... Um, I'm going to be here online. If anyone wants to stick around now, if they have questions, that's fine. If you don't have any questions, go ahead and enter into your breakout rooms. I'm going to give everyone the entire class today to work on this. And, of course, jump in. Feel free to ask questions. If I need to address your team, I'll be happy to do that as well. All right, guys? I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic, and we'll reconvene at the end at 1140. Thank you, teacher. Thank, Thank you, you, teacher. Okay, teacher. Thank you.